Welcome to Let's Talk Property. I'm Heather Hilda Darling and today I'm speaking to Mitchell Krask, member of dance group Diversity. Now Mitch has moved back in with his parents just last year to save money after moving out of his flat with Diversity Group member Perry Keeley. More than one in five first-time buyers bunk in with family and friends to save for a deposit. So let's find out how it's been for Mitch. The plan was to kind of move back in home uh, anyway to get um, uh, my own place. But Corona hit kind of luckily at that time anyway. So for me, go, going back home kind of was a, a bit of a blessing. I didn't really have to worry about it then paying my bills on top and all, all that sort of stuff because I, I imagine living in lockdown you know you're not quite sure what's going to go on with your job and all that stuff is just like extra extra stress so for me going back home was 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 a blessing really and of course then you had your support bubble didn't you so you sort of um that all worked out pretty well but moving out from having shared with somebody for some time that must have been quite difficult yeah and i think obviously living with Pell compared to going back to living with my mum dad and sister obviously the, the dynamic is just completely completely different obviously for a start there's an extra two people in the house so even just on space and you know kind of if you want your own time <laughs> with being in in the house with like my mum dad and sister obviously there's never really quite peace and quiet not not in kind of like a bad way or anything but the dynamic shift was just completely different and to be fair I thought it was going to be not bad that sounds horrible but I don't know I was just kind of dreading it a little bit because where I had lived there for so long I didn't quite know what it was going to be like well I suppose <laughs> you leave as a as a child don't you or as a grown child and then when you started living on your own you become an adult and adults as you said the dynamic of adults living with adults it, it, even if they're family you know that closeness can make things really quite difficult sometimes and just getting your own space is very very important but the Halifax has actually done some research on this so what did the research show what sort of people were moving back and uh, again the reason presumably because they couldn't they couldn't make ends meet sometimes yes yeah, so the Halifax's research shows that last year one in five first-time buyers ended up moving in with like friends or family and they plan to be there for like just over half a year and they also done a study uh to the reason why as well and um the majority said that it was to save money and then 46 percent said it was literally just to have company with others because obviously if you're renting a place on your own being in lockdown well we've had <laughs> a few lockdowns now all yeah. that kind of all that time to yourself isn't normally the best thing you know so even just going back to the company I think has been a, a massive help for everyone. So when you say that they were looking or you were looking to save money did you have a sort of a savings plan in place or did you just think I'll, well a I'm saving on my rent and my bills or did you perhaps I know the bank of mum and dad is very popular at the moment <laughs> did, did, were mum and dad able to help out a little bit to get you towards building up that deposit for a property? Uh, I'll, I'll was already uh, lucky enough like a, a bit of a way there to kind of having what I, what I needed so I didn't I didn't need the help of a mum and dad which I'm glad because they would um they wouldn't have let me forget about it <laughs> so, so yeah just being at home anyway like having the bills all that obviously just got put to the side with the rest of the savings. Would you say that renting has actually helped you appreciate more the costs of living in a property? Yeah because like definitely because you don't you don't actually quite realise um, how quick money can go. I, I'm I'm quite bad, especially when it comes to food. I, uh, for a small person, eat quite a lot of food, and I never normally. It sounds silly, like um, I don't really count like buying food as like a bill or anything. So before I've night, I've done let's say four hundred pound of on food in, in a month on top of rent and everything else compared to being when I was younger back at my mum's it never used to make a dent whereas now like with rent bills everything and then all that stuff 
you don't quite kind of understand how quick money can go so it definitely definitely has made me appreciate um by moving out kind of money and everything like that so in fact what you picked up is probably um culinary skills or was it all takeaways or <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both to be fair I, I don't think you can go go wrong with a nice nice restaurant <laughs> or, or a takeaway here or a KFC okay and budgeting skills as well obviously you know you're beginning to understand the value of money um so that will probably put you in very good stead for when you come to buy a property of your own because it doesn't really change whether you're renting or buying as you said you've still got your bills to pay your utilities um so that's a very important lesson yeah yeah exactly that and the renting compared to actually owning your own your own place isn't really different and just be having that knowledge and kind of experience of renting i know that it'll kind of be okay and how much i'd roughly need or like leeway to what roughly i was spending you know to, mm -hmm. to make it a bit easier I, I hear very often young people say that renting is a lot more expensive than buying their own. Do you agree with that? I think it's all relative because obviously if you're buying your own place, you're going to need uh, a deposit. Whereas if you're renting, yes, the monthlies might be more expensive, but you can kind of, they kind of weigh up to roughly being around the same because you won't have to put nowhere near as much as a, as a deposit down but your monthlies would be more or you get your own place and you have to put a bigger deposit down and your monthlies are a little bit less so i think it all kind of balances out but you see i think when you're renting and you have to find a deposit a lot of people think that's a lot of money but finding a deposit for a mortgage is what, it's a whole, 50 it's a whole times different, more <laughs> yeah it's a whole different ball game you know you never really quite like when i was younger I never quite knew how how expensive oh. houses were and everything. I just thought it was easy. You go to the bank, they give you a mortgage. That's about it. There's no kind of checks or anything like that. And there's no, obviously, rules or regulations. You just kind of, you go, you get your house and live happily ever after. But obviously, that is not quite how it runs. <laughs> Do you wish you'd had more sort of education on buying and renting earlier on in your life? Um, I think compared to like the average person, I feel like because of obviously the boys um, in diversity are a lot older than me, I kind of, obviously no one sat me down and was like, this is that, this is that. Um, but I feel like I was kind of around it a bit more. So I had probably a little bit more experience than I'd say your, your typical like 18 year old. Um, I think it's just a lot, hard like when you're younger i don't feel like it's really educated to anyone so you kind of get chucked in the deep end and have to kind of figure it out for yourself yeah absolutely but i think this is where you know just an understanding of of how rents work against how mortgages work and obviously the government is trying to make it easier for first-time buyers to get on the property ladder um but equally people are jumping on the property ladder that very first rung a lot lot later in life um yeah. so that makes it difficult as well are, are you looking for your forever home or are you just looking for your first step on the ladder do you think you'll move lots and lots of times during your lifetime uh I've, i plan to do it in two so i would just get my kind of foot in the door with my first one get comfortable with it and everything and, and whilst I'm in there I'll be saving to get my my forever home right and and what sort of area would you be looking in I mean there's a lot of evidence showing that people are looking for more space you know the search for space is the is the key word at the moment and certainly green space so if you're close to parks or I'm lucky I'm in Sussex I've got the sea and we've got the downs what are you looking for in your first home um I think, yeah, kind of like the same thing, really. I, uh, for me, though, I don't want to be kind of too far from like the city because where I work is um, East London. So I don't want to be I don't want to be too far, but I want to be far enough away that one, I can get good kind of value for money and two, that it's just a little bit less crowded. So I think they're kind of like my two key things. Mm -hmm. so when are you planning on moving back out from your parents home or have you made that move already uh i've not yet and i'm not quite sure yet because i haven't quite found a place that kind of grabs me yet 
All right. OK, so balancing up if you've got to stay longer with your family or perhaps saving more money, which is the sort of which which has more balance really there, which is the top priority? I think to be fair, I think probably just chilling with my family takes a priority because it's actually been really nice. Obviously, okay. I haven't I haven't I haven't lived there since I left. And I feel like I left as a kid and come back as a, as an adult so even just like my relationship with my mum and dad it's just like so so much better like I, I didn't actually realize kind of how how cool my mum and dad were oh that's <laughs> like, lovely that know, like really being lovely. being back home like it's been, it's been generally it's been so so nice so that's an appreciation for your family which is obviously what a lot of people have found during lockdown that you know community family and friends are so important and and obviously even when you were living with Perry at least you had um a friend there and you've moved from one sort of friendship bubble to your family friendship bubble yeah yeah exactly that and i think like both both of them like as as just grown and even stronger bond obviously with Pell and then moving back with like my mum, dad and sister, like generally it's just been, it's been really nice. I feel very lucky. Oh, wonderful. Now, just to finish off, what advice would you give to <laughs> anyone currently staying with friends and family um, and perhaps trying to save for a property? Would, would you suggest they do the same as you or would you have changed anything that you've done in the last few months? I feel like you need to kind of just take every day as it comes really and just kind of keep your eye on the prize on like just knowing that you're saving up because it like some people might go home and they might not enjoy it as much as kind of what I have so just kind of keep your eye on the prize just think of like the day when you get the keys and you get to kind of go in your own place and I'd also say head over to Halifax's website They've got a first time buyers section and that will literally give you all the information you need. It will have calculators and everything on there. So you can just kind of get a big heads up of kind of the like big pond you're going to be stepping in. You know, you're not just going to jump straight into it and have no idea what you're doing. I think that's brilliant advice. Do all your fact finding before and then at least you know what your goal is, don't you? Yeah, exactly that. And in that way as well, like even with the calculators, like if it says you need X, a month or whatever you can go okay I need that but I'm just going to give myself a little bit more kind of leeway just to make sure you know I'm not scraping to get by or whatnot. Well there's always contingencies aren't there and, and, and unexpected expenses when you're buying. Um, I've moved 22 times over my lifetime and um, it doesn't get easier as I move but even I still learn when I see people you know especially my, my own children moving and the things that they don't know and I think oh you've done a terrible <laughs> job as a parent Heather you haven't told them how this happens but um, I think it's a lovely story and I'm really pleased that it's worked out well for you yeah. and you know the sort of obviously the obvious thing is getting onto the property portals to maybe look at you know where you want to go checking out prices seeing uh, where perhaps an area is slightly less expensive than another and and just taking the time to make your choice yeah because that, that's the thing kind of once you once you've bought a place obviously it's not something you can you can refund or be like, oh, I don't want, I'll be out of here in six <laughs> months. It's kind of, yeah, you need to make sure that when you get a place, don't get it because you're telling yourself, oh, I need, I need it. Make sure that you actually want, want it and you're going to be happy walking through that door every day. I love that, Mitch. I love that. It's non-refundable. I think that's a great tagline. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's not quite that easy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's been lovely talking to you this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for connecting with me. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. For Have me. a great day. Cheers. You I'm Heather Hilda, darling, and I was speaking to Mitch Krask, member of dance group Diversity. Are you saving for a deposit for your very first home? Let me know how it's been going for you. I'd love to know.